Hi everyone, welcome to the Rosehip Island Video Diaries. It is now July and I'm back from my studio to talk a little bit about uh, what I have been knitting and some of the dyeing that I've been up to. My name is Hannah and you can find me on social media um, as Rosehip Island. So that would be Ravelry, Instagram, Facebook, and I don't know if I have forgotten anything. I have my own website with a web shop, uh, rosehipisland.com, and you can find my hand dyed yarn there. Um, yes, I think that's those things I want to mention. Uh, welcome everyone, welcome to new and returning viewers. I am always so grateful to have you here. This is, as you know, one of my favorite things to do, to catch up with all of you with things that I have been knitting and what I have been up to. So thank you for joining me today here in my studio. You might be able to hear that I have a bit of a funny sound when I, well, I sound a little bit different, slightly different maybe because I have a little bit of a sore throat this morning. It is the morning. Um, it's the morning before I'm going to try to work from home. <laughs> Um, because it's school holidays here in uh, Tassie and um, yes I'm trying to work from home with the kids at home so yes I am in northern Tasmania Australia I'm a Swedish expat and I live here with my husband and my two daughters and I like to knit and I do dye a lot of yarn and uh, yes I just want to share some of those things with you today I have decided that I'm just going to keep going in this video uh, and try to um eliminate as much editing as possible and just um try to make this not very time consuming which it can sometimes be because yes i do have to uh, go back inside and um fire up the computer and do some work today but i just really really wanted to catch up with you all it is now july and july is a, a busy busy month it's the month of the um, Sheep and Wool Show in Bendigo and fingers crossed we'll be all heading the whole family, uh, not all of us, but um, some of us will be heading over to Victoria and Bendigo uh, for the show and uh, that's very exciting. So that's only like a week away um, and I just have a lot of work to do before then <laughs> and I thought I just really wanted to get... Um, one of these videos up because otherwise you might who knows how long it will take um so yes school holidays it's busy it's winter and um yes i just wanted to show you what i have been working on um did i say my name is hannah i don't even know if i did anyway minimal editing today so my name is Hannah, if I didn't say that already. <laughs> I'm wearing my daughter's headband, which I made her. Um, so it's a little bit on, on the smaller side, but it's okay because it's stretched a lot when she's been wearing it. It's made of, and I can't remember exactly the details, but it's an alpaca um, yarn that I bought from, what are they called? Morrison and Sons. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's a very nice, yarn for a headband and yes we can just move on to what else I'm, I'm wearing I'll just have a sip of tea I have a few finished items as you can see I'm wearing them this is my rose hip shawl this is a pattern by Jane mindful making and she designed this shawl using my merino linen singles um so I knit one and I it's a beautiful shawl and all these slip stitches section so much fun to knit and um, for mine I used my dark colorway oh, it's cold when I've been drinking tea I can see I have like fire breath or dragon breath or whatever it's called um so it's my dark colorway this tealy one it's it's a dark smaragd colorway it's sort of a one of a kind but it is it's similar to my smaragd and then this one here is the Richmond Birdwing and that's a colorway that I developed for the, um, the yarn retreat that was in um, Queensland last year. Um, so that's that one, the rose hip shawl. 
of Jane Ballett and she's mindful making. And I think I mentioned last time that I did struggle a little bit with this first section here that was all in, in grey and uh, yeah, it took some time. But then once I got into this, these sections here, we're changing colour and doing different slip stitches. It was just a lot of fun. I really recommend this pattern. I did, um, without really being aware of it, modify it. I made this section here only half the length. It's meant to be, you meant to repeat this twice and I only made it once, but the shawl is, it's, it's big enough anyway. So very happy with that. I did because I had, I used most of my gray, my gray skein, and then I used about half of each of these. Um, and I did think when I did this last section here, that maybe I should make it a bit longer. Just to make up for that, I made this bit here shorter, but honestly, I just wanted to have it off the needle so that I could wear it. Um, yeah, so that's my rose hip shawl in the Rose Hip Island Merino Linen Singles. And then another finished item is my throw over by Andrea Maori. And I have been working on this for a little while. Oh, it's really cold. <laughs> This is crazy. I wonder how much of, of the, the breath you can see. Um, anyway, um, my throw over, I have been working on it for a while. I made it out of um, spinning yarn, weaving tails yarn that I bought. No, I didn't buy this at Bendigo two years ago. I purchased this earlier uh, this year when this yarn was discontinued. It's the Marl base. It's 100% wool light fingering weight I would say and uh, it's very similar or the same as the Holst Garn super soft base so I purchased this when it was discontinued and uh, discounted and I made the throw over by Andrea Maori and I've held the yarn double so in the color work section there's two different colors in each so it gives it that mild look i'm very happy with that i was a bit concerned and i had you know had, it was a bit of a sag at the end of this um i made the body at the length that i thought would be good and then when i need to sleeves i realized i wouldn't have enough yarn to make long sleeves and with this kind of jumper i wasn't sure that i would like to have three quarter sleeves so i undid the body um a bit maybe that much and then I started knitting it and I included color work like this at the bottom of the body before the ribbing and then I can't remember how much but that saved me quite a bit of the main color so then I knit maybe my sleeves were here so then I was able to knit further on the sleeves do the color work again and um, yes the they're a good length now they're a little bit on the shorter side but it, it they're good and the length of the body is good too so yes it's all all finished blocked and ready uh today is actually the first time that i'm, I'm wearing it since it was washed and, and blocked and i've noticed that um maybe it's better now that i've been wearing it for a while but when i first started wearing it this whole um yoke part sort of lift, the whole thing lifted up when i was moving around but I think it's now getting mold. It's getting molded to my body, and it's better. But it does. It's quite low here. Um. So when you lift your arms up, the whole this whole bit lifts up. But I think that might. I mean, it's okay. And I think when I wear it, it might um it might improve that a bit. Um. So that's my throw over. Super happy with it. Um, I've also finished a third thing and that was the hot water bottle cozy that I was working on last time and I wrote down the pattern this time I actually mostly follow this pattern but did my own thing a little bit but it's all you need a classic by L London Leo was the pattern that I used I don't have it here but I'll insert a photo of it I'm going to put my shawl on again because it is quite cold out here in the studio. I don't want to have my heating on because it's too noisy. 
Okay, so that's um, three finished items. Oh, uh, I put that here. I took a photo of this jump, the throw over, and this one, which is the Marshland by Tin Can Knits. Um, so it's still here because I took a photo of both of them together. Um, just to show that this is the same base of yarn. I also held double and there is some marling in there as well. Um, and I just thought it was funny because with this one, I think I, I followed the pattern and I had plenty of yarn. Um, and with this one, I really had to just make it however long I could with the yarn that I had. And they turned out almost exactly the same size. And, you know, of course, they're similar colours. So I thought that was a little bit funny. I love both of them. They're great. Um, and then, even though um, June was busy and July busy so far, uh, I have had some, some time for knitting because I guess that's what, you know, keeps, keeps me sane, really. Sorry, I need, I need something for my throat. Um, and one thing that I've started a little bit on again, because I finished these two larger items, um, you know, I was very tempted to start something new straight away, but I didn't. I did um, try to make a little bit of um, progress on my ghost horses sweater. And now I have it inside out again, so I can't really show you. You've seen this many times before. This is an inside out ghost horses. So this is the ghost horses. It's a pattern by Caitlin Hunter. And um, I'm on the sleeve. So I'm knitting the sleeve inside out on a nine inch circular. Uh, and I've done a little bit of progress here. So I have a bit to go on that sleeve. And then I have to knit my second sleeve. And I had this, um, dream or I was thinking that maybe I could finish it for Bendigo in about a week but I'm not sure that will happen because I don't know why but I've because I've knit so much on this I've sort of lost interest a little bit because I feel like I've done it now and um, which is it's not good I do enjoy it when I knit on it but it's not sort of um screaming to me or you know it's not something I think oh I go and knit a bit on my ghost horses because it's sort of I always feel I already feel like it's something that I did in past, so but I will um remind myself to work on this because it will be a great garment once it's off the needles. And this is also neat in my um the same yarn as this, the merino linen singles in the is it Lamington Crayfish, another colorway that I made for the yarn retreat last year and chocolate, the brown one. So these two colorways together are what I'm using for my ghost horses. So that's another, a big item that I'd like to finish. Um, and then another garment that I'm working on that I've actually made a bit of progress on is my Anna T by Sova Stark um, Blackburn Knits. And again, this is made out of my Merino linen singles in night market colorway for a while there i was only knitting with this yarn which is fine but um yes i need to, i need to work on my personal stash and not work, not use all of my shop yarn <laughs> um this is my anity you can see the beautiful detail here in the shoulders and I did knit quite a bit on this because I haven't at all felt like knitting socks. And this is perfect, just plain knitting at the moment. Um, the problem is that it is quite large on me. It's fine, but it's definitely not the nice fitted tee that is on the sort of pattern photos. Um, and I just kept knitting. I thought, oh, well, you know, I'll just make it big. Maybe I'll have to you know, tuck it into my, you know, trousers or whatever. Um, and then I thought, oh, I'm not really sure I would wear it that way. So if I'm not going to wear it when it's this size, should I continue on making it? So it's been stalling a bit and then I decide, oh no, I'll just keep going. It can be a shop sample if I don't wear it. 
And I keep going and then I change my mind and I think, should I really? Isn't it better if I just undo it and knit it in a smaller size and actually wear it? So I, I go back and forth and I need to be on it and then I, oh, yes. Yeah, so it's been a bit like that and I don't know. At the moment, I have many other things to work on, but I do love how it's coming out. So that's the front, and you can see here on the back is where I'm changing my, where I'm alternating my skein. I don't think you can see where I'm alternating. I'm not doing the helical um, way of changing. I'm just changing in the one same spot um, just by putting the yarn that I have been using for the previous round. Is it under the other one? I can't remember. But it's just it's just a very simple way of alternating skeins that seems to be giving good results. I haven't used it before, but I, I no, I won't explain how I do it to you because I might I might get it wrong. Um and that's not good. Um Maybe I did show a little bit on my last video. I can't remember. As you might notice, I'm sort of trying to <laughs> not um, stay on one topic for too long. I'm trying to move on a little bit because I do have quite a bit of stuff to show you and it is a work day starting soon. Um, so that's my Anna T and my third project using my merino linen singles and then I've started two new things I still have socks and blankets and stuff happening but they're not really happening so they're just sitting there but let's see I did after I felt like I had done a little bit of work on my ghost horses after finishing some large uh, items I just really really wanted to cast on something new and I really wanted to use this yarn. So this is the yellow that I used in here with the coral. And I had almost, you know, the full two skeins left that I had. And I just really love this color. And as you can see, like this is the sort of colors that I have in my wardrobe. It's a lot of gray, purple, pink and blue. And that's why this one, I'm so happy to have this done because it's a little bit different to the colors to, of all my other shawls. So, you know, it actually um, gives me um, a bit more variation in my colors that I wear every day. Because I've been keeping on wearing shawls every day at work. Love it. Um, so I had these and, I, you know, was going through different patterns and seeing what I can do. And I purchased a ranunculus uh, pattern a while ago. It's a pattern by Midori Hirose. And it's like, it's always in the top 10, top 20 patterns on Ravelry. Super popular. I think there's close to 10,000 people that have made it on Ravelry. I think it's, it's a huge amount anyway. So I wanted to make it and I had a pattern. I've had it for a while. thought this might work. Someone else had used a similar yarn for it. Um, and then I started reading the pattern and it had this cast on that I just wasn't sure about. And I just couldn't get myself starting it because of that cast on. It was just, you know, a block for me. And then I saw someone on Instagram who had made it and it looked like they just had a normal ribbed neck and it just looked normal. So I asked, what sort of cast on did you use? Did you follow that pattern? And they said, oh no, I just did the normal long tail cast on and it's fine. That's what I always do. I said, oh, thank you so much. That, you know, makes me feel confident to just cast this run uncles on how I, you know, how I want to do it and, and go. Because I just didn't have the brain space or the time or, you know, to do this other thing. So I cast on the ranunculus in this mile yarn. And I haven't got very far. But, yeah, that's how much I have. Um, um, you know, it's a very loose gauge. 
because it's a very very thin yarn i'm doing it just one strand um that's how much i have and you can see i've just done a normal neckline it might be a little bit loose i don't know but i think the whole thing will just be a little bit of a loose garment that you put on top of something else so i'm just into the patterning a little bit um curious to see how this turns out because i've been reading through the pattern a little bit and it seems like you do quite a bit of lace patterning and then you do um raglan shaping for the sleeves and then you separate the sleeves so it seems like it might end up really long in the yoke i don't know but i'm super excited to finally have cast it on and i am enjoying making it so um that's very nice so yes my ranunculus by midori hirosi and then i have one more thing and i was not at all uh, planning to to do this i was quite happy with the amount of of projects that i had ongoing uh, and i do have those you know two pairs of socks that i need to put heels in and yes things that i i should uh, put my knitting time to but my neighbor she she knows that i i knit of course everyone knows that how to how to not know um and she's swedish she's from northern sweden i'm from southern sweden so it's a bit funny that we're now neighbors in tasmania um we have children similar ages and um, they do they play a lot anyway where you meet up for you know a cup of tea and we catch up every now and then and she mentioned that she really would like to make a jumper for one of her daughters and i said oh yes you know she asked me do you can you recommend any patterns and what should i make that's easy to start with she's been eating socks and things before and um, i said why don't we knit a jumper together i mean we need the same jumper at the same time or same pattern at the same time um so i think i gave her the a few options the flax by tin can knits um, i had some magazines swedish knitting magazines with some kids patterns in and then i also showed her huiskapa by madeleine lindostam uh, who's wor who works for Yarbugon, a swedish yarn company and i don't know you might remember i made this a while ago this is huiskapa which is swedish word for skyscraper um, and i made it out of some leftover old stash i had of this um wool and bamboo i think it is or is it cotton bamboo i think it's wool bamboo uh, blend that i used a lot for baby knits and i had these variegated i had some plain colors so i made this the largest size for my youngest daughter to grow into she's grown into it now but because of the type of yarn it is it's not very elastic so the the sleeves they're like um what are they called like bell sleeves really and it is still a bit long for her but she loves wearing it so um but i showed this pattern to my neighbor and i showed this and she decided that this was the pattern that she um wanted to give a try and also it's in swedish so i'm not sure if that was maybe easier for her um so she's making a smaller size and I decided to again make a, a larger size <clears throat> and we've cast on and um, sorry I'm trying to not knit on it very much because I don't want to get too far ahead um, so I've started on a new one and this is using some old um, dk weight that i used to have in my shop i don't really have any dk weight anymore do i no so this was the my dandy dk um yarn i believe in my pop colorway so it's this one and i had two skeins of that um that i just haven't sort of put in the shop 
And so I thought I'll use that as the main color. Then of course it has color work further down the body. And I think I'll just use different sort of leftover of pinks and things. So see how that goes. Um, I mean, I'm mainly doing it because um, I want to help my neighbor get through her knitting a jumper. And I did give my daughter a few options of, of what I could use. I thought she would go for some orange yarn that I have because that's normally her favorite color but all of a sudden she's all into the pink so um that's what I've started as well and they are all the things that I am currently working on and that I have finished so 25 minutes that's that's pretty good hmm I can't remember the pattern for this. I think it's headband with a twist or something like that. Everything that I talk about and show you, uh, you'll be able to find under my pages on Ravelry, if you're able to go to Ravelry. If you have any questions and comments or comments, um, you know, put them in the comments below on YouTube. Send me a message on Instagram. Um, there's a contact me um, form on my webpage, rosehipisland.com. So I'm always happy um, you know, for you to um, communicate with me in any way. Um, and yes, let me know what you think or if you have any questions. I'm always happy um, to get those messages. Okay, well, just, oh, a few little uh, notes on what's going on with Rosib Island, my web shop, and the hand dyeing side of things. Um, what did I write down? Okay, so I've been focusing on clubs, as I have said before, and some wholesale orders and just things that I had on my to die list. I've just sort of been trying to get through those. I can really only die on the weekends at the moment because when I get home from work, it's so dark and cold and um, yeah, it's just not <laughs> just not good to die at night time. So um, it's the weekends really. And now with um, going away to Bendigo and stuff, there'll be, there'll be a bit of a break um, from dying and it's school holidays. So I don't want to spend all my time um, working but I have been focusing on clubs uh, June clubs had already gone out I think last time I recorded or were about to July clubs have gone out this week and um, August clubs are already brewing here and it's you know I'm all all prepared for that to go out in August I've um, sent out a wholesale order with a merino linen yarn to the wool shop Lucky You in Oatland in Tasmania. I have some other sort of pop-up things happening um, is it next month. Yes, but I need to send that off. Um, but yes, I'm focusing, focusing on those sort of things. I have pre-orders for advent calendars up uh, in the listing. I haven't put a lot of information because I want to keep it as secret as possible. But it is a Four Seasons theme. So there's 25 mini skeins. And the first 24 will be six of each season of the year. And then the 25th one would be, it will be like a festive one for Christmas Day. Yes, yeah, so there will be six sort of inspired by autumn, six inspired by winter, six inspired by spring, and six mini games inspired by summer. Um, so that will give everyone a lot of variation. It will be nice and colourful. There'll be a mixture of, you know, tonal, speckle, variegators and things like that. Um, and I will start dyeing those when I get back from Bendigo. Um, I had two options of yarn bases um, and I sold out of one of them, I think. And I have the other, a few of the other one left. So I'll probably keep it open until after Bendigo. Yeah, I'm not really sure when I'll... I was thinking maybe I should also list some 12 days of Christmas because I know that's a popular option. You don't always need 24, 25 mini skeins in your life. 12 is quite a decent amount too. 
and it just makes it a bit more budget friendly. But I just don't know if I will have the time to do that option as well. So I'll see how I, I go. Um, another thing that's coming up after Bendigo is the big is it the big wool show? Yes. So that that's the online event that started last year. That was sort of instead of Bendigo last year in a way. This year it's happening, I think, first weekend of September. So I'll be a virtual vendor or whatever they call it, which means that I'll have a link to my shop on their sort of front page. So any dyeing that I'm able to get done now outside of wholesale and custom orders and clubs i'm trying to uh, keep that for the big wall show i have just received a new shipment of merino linen yarn it was out at the mill so i haven't been able to get any in for a while so i'd sold i dyed up everything that i had and it was it's getting a little bit low levels in the shop so I just last week received a new shipment of merino linen and I have been dying up a bit. So I think on the weekend I dyed up um, maybe a total of 10 colorways or maybe mostly ones that I've had previously, but I think there's two new colorways in there. So there, there will be more coming. Uh, I might do list of merino linen just after Bendigo. I'll see. I'll see when I, I get time to that. But just know that it is it is coming. And I've I've dyed up a lot of sock yarn and there's a bit of mo uh, mohair silk, a bit of everything that I'm trying to get done. Because as I said, I think last time, um, it is work and it takes a lot of time, but it is just such a nice creative outlet for me and I do really enjoy it. So I just do what I can and what I you know feel is good for my soul <laughs> uh, so i think that's oh another thing with the merino linen this time actually they also have a an aran weight um base with the same 90 percent superwash merino 10 percent linen so i got a few of those skeins to try out so i have dyed some of that as well so that will be interesting to try out um when you when i look at it and feel it it's it's similar to the merino hemp yarn that i had a while ago um similar in the construction i think maybe it's not as much sort of white bits in it as the hemp had because i think the hemp had a larger percentage of hemp than it's merino linen has of linen anyway that's coming up as well I'm, I'm giving that a try i'm hoping it will be a nice yarn to work with i think it will be um yes oh actually i can show you the june club um because i'm pretty sure everyone received their shipment these are the june i just put them on instagram yesterday so they're the two minis and the main skein what did i call them frozen frozen rose hips what did i call that maybe frost or something and maybe rose or something i can't actually remember what i call them so it was these and then a tea and there's always an option of black green herbal or mixed when you get one of each of those um so for june the black tea was arctic fire i can't remember the other ones and then some nice little stitch markers so that was the june club and yes july clubs have been shipped so um, if you're a club member, that should be arriving soon. I hope you like them. I think I'll have to make that all of um, today's video. I was thinking before that maybe I should just pop in every now and then during the day and just have short, shorter breaks in my work day and record a few things. But I think it's quite good. I've been able to do this in half an hour or so. I hope I haven't been too fast or that I've, you know, missed saying too many things. I'm sure I um, forgot things. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm knitting away, um, making lots of things, um, dyeing a lot of things. I have plans um, for things in the future. And um, yes, I just, you know, would like to say thank you so much for 
supporting this channel, for um, visiting my web shop and for supporting me by um, you know, purchasing my yarn or just by um, liking posts on Instagram in any way like that. Um, I uh, would like to say thank you because it just means so much to me and I know that anything uh, like that takes time out of your day and um, yes, it, it, it means a lot and I, I, I do uh, really, I do really, really appreciate it. Uh, so thank you and thank you for spending this half hour or so with me here in my studio talking about all my knitting, having a cup of tea and it is still quite cold so I'm quite happy to go inside now where it's a bit warmer and I'll fire up my computer and do my work day and hopefully the children will be happy doing whatever they're doing. Um, I'll have a break for morning tea and for lunch and stuff and um, we'll do I don't know, board game or something? We'll see. All right. Well, um, again, thank you, everyone. I hope this video has been okay. I hope you had a nice break um, or maybe some lovely knitting time. Uh, if you're coming to Bendigo and if I manage to get there without any issues, um, please, if you see me, um, say hello. I don't know many of your faces. I know... Um, I know some na names from um, customers and um, I know some Instagram handles from that. I cannot always match the actual real name with the Instagram handles. Sometimes I can, sometimes I have no idea that they're the same person. Um, faces, I just don't know what most of you look like. So um, please come up to me and introduce yourself and... It might click in my head who you are or it might not but you know um if i seem awkward it's just because it's a bit of a funny situation but i just love i would love 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 it for you to come and say hello to me um uh, that would be great so for this year bendigo is all about meeting people and being social for me um so that's what i would like to do so don't feel weird um it's weird for me too so just come and say hello so I hope to see you at Bendigo or when I come back, probably in August. So I'll see you then. Take care, everyone. Bye.